Alright, so this is a guide on how to get how do we get here in Minecraft 1.14 plus. So here is everything that you're gonna need. I'm gonna go over each of these items. This is somewhat sorted by priority, and then each of these columns are kind of unique. So we have conduit. Um, this is needed for the conduit power effect, and you get it by getting eight shells from drowned and a heart of the sea, which you can get from buried treasure. Now the beacon, it takes three obsidian and five glass and another star you get that from killing the wither wither rose is dropped from any entity that is killed by the wither including a player so um next we have mineral blocks these can be any type of mineral block that qualifies for a beacon that is diamond gold iron netherite and emerald Next we have lead. You can get these from wandering traders just by killing them, easy claps, or you can craft them with slime balls, which you can kill slime inside of swamp. Next you have prismarine, which you're probably going to get prismarine automatically just by getting these gold blocks, because the best way to get these is just by looting monuments, so yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, observers, you take two quartz, six cobblestone and one redstone and you need two of these to make a redstone clock there are other ways to make redstone clocks but this is the most reliable way in my opinion you need two dispensers one is going to dispense potions and then the other is going to dispense spectral arrow on you um, next we have the redstone dust which is just going to bring power to the dispenser and I guess that's kind of, yeah, that's really it. Um, gold ingot, you need to actually power the beacon. Again, this can be really any qualifying material or mineral. Minecart, you're going to be putting the shulker inside of it, and the minecart just keeps it in place, stops it from teleporting. Cobblestone, or really any building block, just so you can actually build the platform. Water bucket for the area you're going to be swimming in in order to get Dolphin's Grace and Conduit Power. This piston is going to be your on-off switch, uh, including the lever over here, to just start the observer's redstone clock. Then the rails is just going to be, once you have the shulker inside of the minecart, you're going to be needing it to be on rails to push it around. Cobblestone walls will align you with the wither rose so that you're inside of water while also getting hit by the wither rose. Fence, you're just going to be able to tie the dolphin down with a lead. And then oak trap doors. One of them is to just seal off the shulker. Um, so when it's up, the shulker can't hit you. And then the other one is to get into the swimming position. So these are all the splash potions you need. I would prefer you to make them into splash potions, just so you can instantly pop them. Alright, on screen you should be able to see everything you need to um, brew these potions. So for leaping it's going to be a nether war and rabbit's foot, along with gunpowder to make it into a splash potion. That goes for all of these. Night vision, you're going to need a nether war and golden carrot. Invisibility, it's going to take golden carrot and fermented spider eye along with um, nether wart. Nether wart also applies to all of these except for weakness, which is this one right here. Weakness, you just need a fermented spider eye. Slowness, you're going to need sugar and then spider eye. Water breathing is, let's see, it's puffer fish. Strength is blaze powder. Slow falling is a phantom membrane, and swiftness is sugar. Alright, so spectral arrows, you can either get these from bastions, usually bastion chests is just something you'll automatically do, or you can craft them by taking an arrow and then putting four glowstone around it. Now an enchanted golden apple, you can only get these from certain structures, that includes desert temples, treasure bastions, Ruin portals, uh, I guess mansions, and I think there's a few other 
like uh, mine shafts, but the main ones you're probably going to get it from is a desert temple, just because there's so many, and each of them has four chests. Um, puffer fish, you're going to actually need two of these, one for the water breathing potion. And you can either fish for these, it's a somewhat low chance, or you can find them inside of lukewarm oceans. And then this suspicious stew, if you eat it, it's actually going to give you blindness for three seconds. Or not three, it's like eight. Um, and yeah, you have to actually craft this to guarantee you get blindness, so you can use an azure bluette, which is, let's pull that up. This flower right here, um, you should be able to find them pretty easily, they're pretty common. And then a red and brown mushroom and a bowl, obviously, for the stew. Now these are all the mobs that you'll need. You're going to need at least two pillagers. Both of them need to be captains. Um, one of them's going to get you Hero of the Village, and then after you get Hero of the Village, you're going to get Bad Omen. Elder Guardian, you get Mining Critique from. Dolphin, you get Dolphin's Grace from. And the Shulker, you get Levitation from. Alright, so this part of the video, I'm going to be showing how to actually make the platform, as I call it, to get how do we get here. Um, it's going to give you almost every single effect besides Mining Fatigue, Cure of the Village, and Bad Omen. So to start, we're going to go ahead and put down our materials. I've came to 0-0 zero, zero because on single player, the Shulker will actually um, appear here once you send it through the end portal, which I can briefly go over Shulker Transport in a minute. But yeah, so here's our materials. We have our potions and whatnot in here. So I like to start with actually building the beacon and conduit. Alright, so I'm going to come over here, and I like to have the beacon level with the C, so I guess standing on top of it, you'd be Y63. I'm not completely sure if that varies from world to world, but I don't think it does. Then we need to make a max tier beacon, so as long as you have as many gold blocks as I've shown, you should be fine. Once you get the second level down, which I guess I'm just going to come do this right now, and you already have your conduit, um, if you do that is, you're going to be able to place it down. I like to do it right now because then it makes placing the blocks a lot easier as you're not going to be drowning once you get that conduit power. Um, that's assuming you don't have respiration. Even with respiration, you can run out of breath. So just remember that the bottom layer needs to be a 9x9. Nine nine, and then just above that should be 7x7. Seven seven, above that, 5x5. Five five, and then at the very top, you have 3x3. Three three, and then the beacon at the very, very top, I should say. Alright, once you have your beacon in place, you want to extend out this platform a bit more. I'm just going to go four out on each side, so... Alright, so now that we've got our platform in place, we're actually able to start setting things up. Also, just to note, you're going to need a bit more than a stack of building blocks, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Another thing I forgot to list in the materials was dirt, but getting that shouldn't really be hard. You're going to need the dirt so that you can actually place your wither rows. So you want to pick a direction to put your, um, I guess, so you can either, I'm just going to have west be my main direction. Um, and yeah, so if you're facing, face the direction you want to, and then come from the beacon, go over two, and then down one. And you're going to place your dirt block there. And then we're going to take our wither rows and place it on top. Sometimes, if you're unlucky, you can get the Wither Rose right here, and that's going to be a problem for you if you're trying to flip the lever, which is right here. It can get in the way. It should never really be, like, a terrible problem. Like, you should always be able to flip it no matter where it is, but just keep that in mind. If it's right here, um, just make sure that you are able to actually flip it um, without, you know, wasting a lot of time. So next we're going to go ahead and take our piston, 
and our observers and you're gonna come right here and this is where you place your piston and then what we're gonna do is uh, placing our first observer doesn't really matter we'll get our lever out and we're gonna wanna put our observer against this and then place it against there so it makes it clock um, you're actually gonna want it so if you're facing the lever and you're holding shift you should be able to place the observer like that and then you can see that we've made a clock alright next we're gonna take our redstone dust and place four of it in this pattern kind of like a reverse L um, just facing the lever from here and then we're gonna take our dispenser we're gonna put one right here and then we place a block right here and then another right here and then we can take our potions right now this one right here is gonna be our potion dispenser the other one's gonna be your spectral arrow if you can probably get more than one arrow just in case you accidentally fire it by accident or if you mess up you need to do this again another thing we're gonna do right now is charge our beacon so I like to do haste and regeneration you can um, do haste too but there's really no point point. and regeneration even though you get it from your enchanted golden apple you only get about 10 seconds and if you want more time after you've eaten your god apple um, it's best to just have it be regeneration on the beacon so you don't have to worry about it we're going to take out a few more blocks and then from the wither rows we're going to place a wall underneath our dispenser and then a wall to the right of the wither rows then we're going to place a block right here and here and then take out our trap doors we're going to place it on the ground and it should flip up so that it's away if that makes sense like you don't want it to be like this you want it to be like this I guess almost like two blocks away from the wall rather than one and then we can take our water you, you should be able to place it right here and it won't flow anywhere I'm gonna place another one there we'll just place a block there and we're gonna move our shulker boxes so right here this is gonna be the cage in a sense for the shulker and this is where we're going to put our shulker. Um, I'll demonstrate in a bit. But yeah, just build that for now. And then finally, let's get our last materials. So we have our Minecraft lead and rails. I've already... Well, actually, I haven't. So yeah, rails just want to be leading on in here. You can do this if you want. I like to actually just have it so that once the shulker is in place, you just break that rail and then place a block there. Um, we're gonna do this. If you have the rail right here and it takes this corner, it can suffocate against this block if there was a block right there. So maybe try and leave a space right here. And then we're just gonna work on getting our shelter in place. Before we head to the end, I actually did forget one step and that is actually to place a trapdoor right here and then if I can get some blocks. You're gonna place a block above the water here, um, and I I guess cover this up too, so the shulker bullet doesn't go flying out. And yeah, I guess that's almost everything. One last thing you could do is add in your fence right now. This is just the fence you're gonna latch this lead to that has the dolphin on. All right, so the first step for the shulker transport is to actually get to the end cities where the shulkers are located. And to do that, after you've killed the Ender Dragon, you should see one of these gateways around your island somewhere. It's always going to be, well, depending on the seat, it's going to be in a different spot, so I can't tell you exactly where it's going to be. And once you're here, you can either use a trapdoor, Ender Curl, or just maybe just swim through water. You're going to come through here, and if there's not an end city like there is in this seed nearby, you're probably going to have to search around for one. So there's two types of end gateways in the end. There's these types that I just came through. These are the original ones. These ones are actually going to lead back to the gateway that you came through. And then there's ones that are going to be farther out. 
um, that aren't going to lead you to another gateway, but are just going to lead you to the Obsidian platform. So preferably, you want to try and find an end city close to the original gateway, but that's not always going to happen. And the reason you want this is because it makes Joker transport just a bit easier. So the best way to do this is to make a bridge to the shulker. Alright, so once you find your shulker that you want to transport, you want to get it inside of a boat. And make sure that there's a solid block below it because I'm on peaceful right now so it's not going to attack me. But if I weren't, it would be shooting at me. If it's below a solid block and you're not on peaceful, um, and it's in a boat, then it's not going to be able to shoot you. So you can see right here that I've made a bridge directly below our shulker, and the reason that it's not directly connected to the end ship is because we don't need it to be, and I'll show that in a minute. So basically, if you are in line with this and you're in a boat, you're actually not going to take fall damage. Um, there is a specific number that will actually cause you to take fall damage. I think it's like 47. I don't know exactly why that is, but... It can happen if you are given the right height, so doing this is, it's a low risk, but it is, it is definitely a risk. So I'm just going to drive this into the gateway once I'm ready to, except for, I just remembered I am not completely ready. So I'm just going to head through, and one thing that you should do is make sure that the shulker has a platform. Because if there's not a platform like this right here, I just like to make it to the corner. It doesn't really matter exactly where it is. At least I don't think so. But if this isn't here, it's actually going to be put on the ground down there. And that's going to be a bit of a time waste. So we don't want that. Let's get the water out. And we're going to come to the corner just to minimize damage. Then come through. This can sometimes happen. If it does, you just want to save and quit and then rejoin. And we're going to be put here, but the shulker's going to be sent through, along with the boat. And there we go. Shulker's through. So now, if you have come through an original gateway, then it's going to be on this. But if not, the shulker can be put in here. Um, it's going to be the same thing for putting it through, but the only difference is you're going to have the shulker right here instead. So... I'm demonstrating on this type of obsidian platform because this is kind of the worst case scenario. Um, but getting it through shouldn't be too hard. Just make a 2x2 two two area to send it up through. And you're going to need a piston, doesn't need to be a sticky piston, and also a redstone torch. So just get that right now. Now, preferably. You want to have this block gone, and then you want to place your breaker block below that, place the piston right here, and then place that right there. Then you need a place to put your torch, so right here works, you can see. Um, we're going to go ahead, and I kind of misplaced this. I guess you can make this a 9x9 nine nine area, that's probably best. Just to guarantee it's not going to get suffocated. But 2x2 two two probably most of the time will be fine. So we're going to drive the shulker over to the area. And then you're going to place the torch, break it, and don't do that. You want to keep repeating this process until the shulker is level with the end fountain. Which I don't know what the Y level is. I think it probably is always going to be the same. Don't quote me on that though. And I guess a good place to go to is the piston limit, which I believe is 12. Again, don't quote me on that. But yeah, we're going to come up here and we're going to come over to the fountain. So we can see the fountain is at Y66. So we're just going to come back to our shulker. And right now, we're at Y61 with the shulker, so you can push it up right here right now, but an alternative is just to bridge over. And it's nice because you can just walk backwards 
and it should be pretty easy. And then eventually you don't have to make a bridge. And then once you get to this point, you can set up the piston again. So since we've hit this wall right here, we're gonna set it up another five blocks, I believe. So that should be maybe one more, we'll see. And we're actually one short, let's fix that. And then once you get up here, remember boats can actually go over a one block gap, so just keep that in mind. And we're gonna go ahead and connect it here. Once you've got your bridge finished, you're just gonna go ahead and make your way to the end fountain. The end fountain is just the bedrock over there. I don't know if that's the actual name of it, just what I call it. And before you actually get to this point, you're preferably going to want to have a piercing crossbow, or even just a normal bow, but piercing is definitely the best for this, as it can guarantee you're going to hit the boat. So you're going to need two ender pearls. Um, well, there's there's two options. You can either use... And getting an ender pearl shouldn't be hard. I mean, there's going to be a ton of endermen if you're not on peaceful. And then we'll get another boat. So this is somewhat optional, but it's what I like to do. So first, I'm going to send a boat through. And then I'm going to pearl over here. And the boat is now through. Because you can't send an entity inside of an entity through the end fountain. So that's why you can't... You won't go through if I do this. And we're going to do the same thing for the shulker. Um, try not to suffocate it. Only we're going to need to shoot it with our bow. If you're planning on not doing it with piercing, which I don't really see a reason why not to. Unless you like threw out your piercing crossbow early. So we're just going to go ahead and get ourselves our crossbow. And since we have piercing, even if we hit the shulker, it's still going to destroy the boat. Um, assuming you don't miss. So yeah, we even though we hit the shulker, it still went through because of the piercing. It doesn't have to be piercing for, but it's what you need anyway. And you can see that the shulker is actually already inside of a boat. Um, this one got put at spawn point, which is kind of interesting instead of zero zero it can either be put here or at zero zero I think since there was a boat here it was put at spawn point um, but that's kind of just speculation so anyways once you have it in here you wanna start going towards your platform I mean if you absolutely want the shulker at the at zero zero then maybe don't send the boat through first and another thing, when you're doing this, oh, you can see, if you go too fast, you can just see it right there. The shulker will actually drown, so try and keep a constant speed. It's also going to be shooting you, so behind you there's going to be like a giant trail of shulker bullets. So just try and make your way past that. Um, yeah, and <laughs> don't let it drown. You can get water breathing on it, but... Um, that can be a bit of a waste of time. You can see I just destroyed the boat when it was right here. And it just teleported to a random block on the platform. Now hopefully it's an easy place to get it back inside of a boat. So, and again it's going to be shooting you, so if you get it back in the boat, just wait over here for all the shulker bullets to disperse. And then once you've done that, you just want to drive your shulker in place. Now you want to place it in the middle of this rail formation. Then take out your minecart. And make sure you have a block in your inventory as well. And we're going to destroy the boat. And you want to do this a lot faster than I am because it's going to be attacking you. But if you push the if you push the minecart in, it's going to go in, you can destroy the rail, place a block there, and the shulker is in place. Easy as that. 
although it's going to be a lot harder. And then if we change our game mode, you're going to see it can give us levitation just like that. Right, so the next thing that you need is a pillager outpost, preferably. I mean, you can technically use a woodland mansion, but this is much easier to find. The closer to spawn, the better, and you also want to have it within range of a village. I say within range, that just means close. Um, and when you come here, you're going to want to look for the pillager captain, which you can identify by the banner that it has over its head. So there it is right there. We see one. And one important thing is you want to change your difficulty to normal. Um, that doesn't need to be right now. It just needs to be right before you start your raid. Um, and we're just going to come here. Kill the guy. And then once you get Bad Omen, we're just going to want to look around for a village. And I believe there's one over here. Yes, okay. And we're going to come in here. And we're going to start our raid. So if you're also trying to get monsters hunted, I would recommend actually killing the golem. Because the golem can actually kill one of the, uh, like the evoker, when you actually want to kill it yourself. So I'm going to do that. Um, keep in mind that if all the villagers die, the raid is actually going to end, so try and keep them safe. I mean, you don't really have to for a normal raid most of the time, but is nice. So yeah, you just need to finish out the entire raid and shouldn't be too hard. Um, yeah, as long as you are eating enough. You can also set your spawn, that's not a bad idea. Should be pretty easy if you're inside of a village. Alright, once you've reached the end of the raid, make sure that you kill the vexes before you kill the evoker if you're trying to get monsters hunted. And I guess that's really all there is to say about it, if I can actually get this. There we go. So we're going to get here of the village. And now you're able to leave the village. Um, make sure you grab the totem that you get from the evoker every time. And we're going to go back to the pillager outpost. And look for another raid captain. So sometimes you may get unlucky with spawns. Um, and if that happens, you can change your render distance to 2, which your game should be paused, but I have opened a land. And then if you fly away, it's a actually, I'm going to kill this captain. They're going to despawn, and then when you come back, it should reload them, and you're going to see more. Um, I can't really demonstrate that. But, yeah, I mean, shouldn't be too hard to visualize. So we're gonna, once we get this, head straight to our monument. Now, your monument, if it's really far out, it's probably worth making a nether portal to it. But doing that can take a lot of time, so if you're fast enough with your rockets, then it's not really necessary. Or if it's close enough to spawn, it's once again not necessary. But on this seed, the monument is quite close to spawn, and the pillager outpost is relatively close to spawn, so it's not really something we have to worry about. Alright, one important thing I should mention is to not use this intentionally um, after you've gotten here of the village, because it'll actually clear every status effect you have, and that will get rid of here of the village, along with Bad Omen if you have it. So make sure you don't use this until after you've done how do we get here. So we're going to come up to the monument here, and there's usually going to be an Elder Guardian right here if you haven't killed it. So I've just remembered that I changed my difficulty to Peaceful, so that actually despawned all of the Elder Guardians. So I'm just going to place in a bunch of them in here. Let's get to a safe spot, and there we go. So we have Mining Fatigue now, and we're going to want to get our lead ready. And you can turn on hitboxes with F3B look for a dolphin which we're gonna need for dolphins grace 
Um, let's see if we can find one here. This is the main reason you want to do it in an ocean, is because it's really easy to get a dolphin. And if you're wondering why we're doing this so late, um, like right after you get mining fatigue, the main reason for that is because the dolphin will easily die or despawn if you just leave it on a lead and fly away. So it's best to do this part right now so that it's not really a problem. You may have to fly out far, but if you're in a deep ocean, you should find one. I guess I just kind of had a bit of a hard time, but we found one. And even if you find one far out, it shouldn't be a problem because Dolphin's Grace makes you go really fast, so. Yeah, just make sure it stays on the lead. And we're going to bring it over to the fence that we've placed. going to go ahead and right click on it. And just, you can double check right now that you have Mining Fatigue, Bad Omen, Hero of the Village. You should also have your beacon effects. And we're going to go ahead and get everything we need to eat. Alright, now something that you probably want to do before you get Mining Fatigue is to actually get your hunger down 4 points. And this is just going to allow you to eat everything without being able to not eat something. So the Enchanted Golden Apple restores 2 hunger and then the Pufferfish restores half of 1. And then as long as you're down at least half of a hunger point, you should be able to eat the Suspicious Stew. I apparently have a bunch of saturation, so you can use a Flint and Steel. That's a pretty effective way to take damage. Um, but yeah, I do have limited mining fatigue, so you definitely want to do this a lot er earlier than I am. Alright, so we're down 3 points. I have 45 seconds of mining fatigue, which is enough. If you want to play it safe, then that's fine. And we're going to come here, flip this down so that the shulker hits us. We're going to swim to get mining fatigue. Flip this switch, eat the puffer fish, and eat your stew. And you should get the effect. Also, if you have your totem right now, if you just swim into the wither rose, um, let's take off our armor, then eventually, I have invisibility, so that looks a little interesting. You should lose all of your status effects. And we'll put it back on. That Then you should have the effect and be done. So you can break that. And so some commonly missed effects if you did not get how did we get here are sometimes you can forget the spectral arrow. Maybe you chose one of the wrong potions. Your Mining Fatigue, or Hero of the Village, or Bad Omen may have ran out. Um, you can also run out of Blindness if you eat it at the wrong time. And that's kind of the main effects that you can forget easily. So, I guess sometimes Dolphin's Grace if you're swimming, and the Dolphin's out of range or the Dolphin's dead, you may not get it, but... Yeah, it might be worth it to actually just test if... This is working beforehand, so once you don't have the effect, you can come in here and swim. So I'm going to go over the eating order again, just in case you may have missed it or if it was too fast. Alright, so once again, we're going to eat everything. So you just saw me craft that. It's very important that you use the Azure Bluette and not any other flower, um, just to guarantee you actually get that blindness. And yeah, you don't want your dolphin to be on the platform, so just try and push it off if this happens. It shouldn't if you're fast enough and you do this uh, very last, but it can sometimes happen. So once again, we're going to want to be down. Alright, so we're down three. So, you're going to eat your enchanted golden apple, then wait for the shulker to hit you, start swimming to get dolphin's grace, like so, eat the puffer fish, flip this lever to get all the potions, and then eat your suspicious stew. And then right after you want to 
die with the totem in your hand. If you need to. Sometimes you can just drink milk if you want to. But yeah, that should be everything. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I should be able to answer anything you throw at me. If not, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's the video. Thank you for watching.